What's up, YouTube? It's Jado back here with some tech news that I found interesting this week. Google unleashes yet another new feature for their Gmail product. Some Microsoft Xbox news that we've been long waiting for. And Apple HomeKit launches today. So unless you've been reading any kind of news about Google and the Gmail product, uh, you probably wouldn't know that this feature is now available, but it's a hidden little undo send feature that Google launched yesterday. What this will do is when you send an email, you'll have up to 30 seconds to basically renege on what you just sent, whether it was a hasty email or something that you didn't quite type out right, seen some grammatical errors in a job resume or a job submission, or just accidentally hit a reply all button. We've all done that before. But this feature is not turned on by default. Um, this isn't just an automatic enhancement. You do actually have to go into your Google account settings. I believe it's under the general tab there and you'll select to enable undo send. Kind of a handy feature. I don't know how much that I would personally use it because my Gmail is my personal account. Uh, my professional account that I use for like job submissions and anything that I don't want people knowing my personal email address for goes through my Outlook. Um, I just think that it's a more professional look and feel, mainly just a more professional title to the uh, email string there. Microsoft announces that Xbox One will now be able to play Xbox 60 titles, something that everybody was disappointed in when Xbox One launched, what, two years ago, two and a half years ago? Now, this was actually announced at E3, which was a little bit ago, um, I think just over a week ago now, so uh, not exactly new news if you're keeping up on E3 and all of those developments in the gaming world, but just thought that I'd throw it out here anyway. I'm excited for it because for me, my 360 lives on my lower level and my Xbox One lives on my main level. So for me being as lazy as I am, uh, some days that I don't want to play any of my Xbox One titles, but I don't really want to go downstairs either, I'll be able to play those games on my Xbox One. Now it's not just as simple as picking the game from Xbox 360 catalog and being able to play. All of your current game titles that are in digital format will actually port straight over, but anything that you have on a disc, you do still have to use the disc to basically authenticate that you still own the game and to be able to download it. Now, Xbox One is able to do this because of emulation. They're bringing the old Xbox 360 dashboard into Xbox One in basically like a virtual machine. And that really, that makes sense to me. Um, that's why I didn't really ever understand why 360 titles weren't available to play from the get-go. Most likely it was more of just a marketing thing, but obviously there needed to be some testing done as well. But being that Xbox One runs, I think it's like three different OS's in the background all at the same time. You got your main dashboard, you got your game OS that you don't really see unless you're in a game, and then you've got basically a Windows 8-esque type dashboard running for your apps. So figure why not throw an extra virtual machine in there, give it an Xbox 360 dashboard, and let's have some fun, right? Now what I would really like to see happen is, and this probably wouldn't happen at launch, but I know that they can do this, bring back the old blades, bring back the blade dashboard Microsoft. That would be awesome for like a throwback Thursday thing or uh, you know, even just a, a month long, you know, gold member exclusive, you can go back to the old Blade dashboard. I think a lot of us game enthusiasts would, uh, would appreciate that. And finally, Apple launches the HomeKit today. This has been kind of a mixed bag of reviews that I've seen online. A lot of challenges with the HomeKit integration. And not really so much, I guess, the integration part, but the actual use part. And that's really coming from Siri. Um, this is, from what I've read, is mainly Siri's fault. And this is because Siri's getting kind of old. Um, Siri, in any of the iOS products, she's just, she hasn't really evolved that much. She hasn't made the leaps and bounds that uh, Google's Assistant has or Microsoft's Assistant has. Um, I, I just don't, I feel like Siri is always the same trick and just kind of does it 
slightly better than the previous version. And that's really kind of showing up here with HomeKit. Um, a lot of the reviews and demos that I've seen, there's been challenges in the speech that Siri picks up on. When it comes to being able to control a smart home, you don't want to have to learn a set of commands. It should be inherent. It should be able to decipher what you're trying to tell it to do and just do it. And that's something that Siri evidently is not doing at this point. But it's getting there. Have faith. Apple will always make something that's not right, right. They'll make it easier to use. And that's the biggest thing with Apple and what they have going with them with all their products. They might be falling behind a little bit in some of the features and technologies, but they always will have the ease of setup. There's really no other company that you can buy the devices and put them all together in your home and they just work. There's not much learning involved with it. Everything sees each other, everything talks to each other. It's just very simplistic to be able to use and, and make happen. So I do have faith that Apple will make the home kit right and they will enhance it and make it better. Right now, I think there's a requirement to have an Apple TV in your home to basically serve as the bridge to all these connected devices. That's something that's going to go away and get easier, if you will, with iOS 9. They're going to send all those features up to iCloud. Which, speaking of iCloud, Apple, when are you going to give us more than five gigs worth of space to dump our crap into? I mean, that is ridiculous. I've got a SkyDrive that has 108 gigs, and you can't front me another maybe five gigs? Give me 10 gigs of space? Come on. So anyway, that's my time, guys. Hope you found this update helpful and useful and informational. I hope you all have a great day out there. And if you really enjoyed this video, please throw a like down below. Whoa, got a bad shit in the road while you're driving. But if you liked the video, hit that thumbs up below. If you had something that you wanted to add to it or any kind of questions or comments, definitely drop that into the comment box below and consider subscribing for more content like this. But until next time, just another day in the office for me.